Good day to you one and all. It is I, Justin Hawkins, and this is Justin Hawkins Rides Again. (laughs) I can't wait for this one. Um, I finally, after much deliberation, I've decided to do an episode on Limp Bizkit, spelt B-I-Z-K-I-T. Not Bisquit, which I think some of us, I probably thought it was spelt in the traditional way. Um, Bisquit, as in B-I-S-C-U-I-T. It's not that. Um, The song that I'm going to talk about is called Rollin. Remember that one? Those of you with uh, young children, uh, when, when a pea or a, or a you know, Brussels sprout falls off your child's plate and it sort of trundles towards the edge of the table, you're probably like me, you go, rolling, 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 and then, you know, the child dives to stop the vegetable from hitting the floor. Um, so it's, you know, it's permeated the culture to the extent where whenever there's something spherical on a plate, there's a possibility I'll end up singing a Limp Biscuit song. So it must have been successful. Let's get into it. I'll, I'll talk a little bit about Limp Biscuit and then uh, play the song and then we can discuss why it was so popular and what's great or not about it. Justin Hawkins writes again. Again. Limp Biscuit. Limp Biscuit formed in 1994 in Florida, and the band's music is marked by Fred Durst's angry vocal delivery and guitarist Wes Borland's sonic experimentation. I've seen Wes Borland doing some acting in something a while ago. I've, I've forgotten what it was now, but uh, it was something violent. I thought he was really good in it. They're considered one of the bands that defined the new metal genre, which of course was terribly prevalent in the early noughties. It's one of the things that uh, people said about the darkness was, oh yeah, the darkness has come along, they're doing normal rock, um, which makes a change from all this new metal. But new metal sort of passed me by really, I never bothered to listen to it properly. The album, Chocolate Starfish and the Hot Dog Flavoured Water, which used to remind me of uh, Starfish and Coffee, which was the Prince song, and then I realised that it was sort of making fun of Melancholy and the Infinite Sadness, which is a uh, Smashing Pumpkins album that came out in 95 or something. The Limp Biscuit Records uh, set a record for the highest first week sales for a rock album with over one million copies sold in the US in its first week of release. Um, 400,000 of those sales happened in the first day, um, making it the fastest selling rock album ever, breaking the record held for seven years by Pearl Jam's Verses. Um, the band's 2021 comeback Comeback album still sucks. Get it? Limp Biscuit still sucks. Self-deprecating humour. That's that's an awareness that you don't often see, actually. Um, helped with the shifting opinion, with the album receiving widespread positive reviews and acclaim for the first time since the early 2000s. But I think when you have a title like that, still sucks, you're, you're doing... If a journalist says, yeah, the, the album's called the right thing because they, it really is, they still do suck, then it just makes the journalist look like a moron. Um, so they're, only, they're obliged to say something positive. It's a really smart title, actually, because it's taking the piss out of itself on one level, but it's also making it very difficult for a reviewer to not fall into their trap, really. It's a delicate and, and nuanced game, and I think they play it really really carefully and well, actually. Let's have a look at this video, and then we'll decide why it's cool. He doesn't give a fuck, apparently. Hey! Hey, yo! Yo, Red Cap! What up? Wait, is that Ben Stiller? Watch it for me. Don't scratch it. Who would give their keys to Fred Dirt? Who in their right mind would do that? He's a rock and roll rebel. There's no telling what he might get up to in there. He could have just eat crisps on the passenger seat or, or, or he could um, take it to a car wash and then not put the roof up or something. Just to do something really irresponsible like that. He's not even wearing his hat the right way around. This is Rebellion 101 and still has made a mistake. You mark my words. Can you tell I've never seen this video before? Okay. All right, partner. Keep on rolling, baby. You know what time it is. What does that mean when people say that? Oh my God, this video is so heroic. I've never seen it before. It puts me in mind of that Audio Slave video that was on a... I don't know where it was. Some, some, it felt like it was... Was that on top of a building? There was loads of fireworks going off in that one, but this this looks like actual helicopter footage of a band kicking ass on a 
on the top of a skyscraper or something like that in in New York? Could be. It's really exciting to watch. Loads of glitter balls as well. Right here, L-I-M-P, biscuit is right here. People in the house. L-I-M-P, biscuit is right here. I think he's probably acknowledging that uh, when it comes to biscuit, he's misspelt it because L-I-M-P, and if, he, if he'd have carried on that thought within the, the rap itself, he would have said L-I-M-P, B I Z K I T, and everyone would be like, well, no, it's C S S S C U I T, isn't it? That's what you're spelling there is biscuit, but you've done it sort of frenetically in a really economical way, and then you're bothering to spell it out. So it's good that you changed track at that point. This is not an episode of Be Nice, by the way. I'm genuinely trying to find out what the cultural phenomenon of Limp Biscuit is and was. So. Hands in the air, because if you don't care, and we then we don't care. Yeah, that's a good point, actually. So I think what he's saying there is like, um, do some physical gesticulations, by all means. Because if you don't, we'll lose interest in playing the music, because what, what, what they're saying is the crowd inspires them to be the best Limp biscuit that they can be. Um, but they need your participation. And all they're asking is for you to put your hands up in the air. Because if you don't care... Why the fuck should they? He's already said at the beginning that he doesn't give a fuck. Didn't he say that? I think he mentioned that. Look how cool uh, Wes Borland is. He's got this brilliant, terrifying presence. I've seen him with like big eye, like some sort of contact lens in there that makes his eyes look big as well. I like the way he manipulates his face. It's it's good. He doesn't give a fuck, but he, he actually what he doesn't give is a because I keep bleeping this stuff out. I don't give a. F- <laughs> I always get nervous when I see a, a rock band that has somebody doing scratching on some turntables near it. It's the kind of hybrid that makes me nervous. I don't know. Can't explain it. Hands up, hands down. Tell me what you're gonna do now. Every day and every night, oh. hear this platinum thing right here. Uh-huh. Well, we're doing it all the time. Well, so you better get some better beats and uh, get some better rhymes. <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna go through that ra- rhyme again. Uh, the rap, rather. Um, Let's break it down. I always think that the best of rap works as mere prose when spoken. Let's have a look. You you want to mess with Limp Biscuit? You can't mess with Limp Biscuit. Why? Because we get it on. Because we get it on. Every day and every night. Oh. Every day and every night. This platinum thing right here. Uh-huh. This platinum thing right here. Doing it all the time. Huh? We're doing it all the time. Better get some better beats in. So you better get some better beats. Get some better rhymes. And get some better rhymes. What, an even better rhyme than doing it all the time, get some better rhymes. Even better than that? Impossible. But for all of its, um, I don't know, it's, it's something really just simply even though they're not really saying anything except for we're Limp Bizkit and we're very very good so you, you should I urge you to keep on rolling if you want to fuck around with us because you know Limp Bizkit or whatever it is they're saying but when you hear what the guitars do it's detuned to I think Either C or C sharp. And it's just some riffery, really. It's, you could argue that it's not that dissimilar to what Rage Against the Machine was doing, but there's something about Rage Against the Machine that's rougher around the edges and, and a bit less sort of overproduced. I think as soon as you get guys with, with actual turntables, the reason why it makes me nervous is because it, it sort of comes away from the idea of amps and guitars and stuff and it's definitely a pre-recorded element even if you have to trigger it yourself you know 
to all intents and purposes, you're you're basically just wobbling something around. I, no, I suppose it's, maybe it's a percussive instrument. I don't know. Even the verses are just a collection of sort of hooks. You know, saying things like, um, "You better get yourself some some better rhymes," and, and we're doing this all the time. And um, that's fine, but um, it's just that. What is this? Is it just like an opportunity to sort of celebrate the? The glorious uh, collective known as the Limp Biscuit. It's it's a really an, sort of anthem. It's their anthem, isn't it? Really. Ladies and fellas and the people that don't give up, all the lovers, all the haters. It's been a long day. I think I understand why um, why they're able to ride the criticism because I actually think that for all of its kind of of how vacuous and vapid the whole sort of sentiment is, it doesn't really it's not saying anything of import. There's you know it's just some riffs and a man saying that basically his band is good, <laughs> you know, over the top of it. But um, I I just think it's like when people hate it, it's like, well, they don't care. They just don't care. They really don't. Why would they? It's not like they've invested anything into it that, that sort of resembles emotion. You know, it's like this isn't, this isn't the man reading a poem you know, from the streets, as it were, and, and you know, there's nothing in there. Does, you don't, I don't know anything about this band from seeing that. All, all I'm hearing is that they're going to keep doing the things that they've been doing because they're really good at it, and, and it doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman or or you don't give a fuck or whatever you are, then what are you going to do? You're going to keep on rolling, rolling, rolling. Um, so I think if you, if that's the level of kind of uh, engagement in your own lyric, then when somebody slags it off, it's just water off a duck's back. It's like, well, I don't care if you think it's shit. It only took me five seconds. What, what do you want me to do? It's like, it's like criticising somebody's sandwich that they've made that afternoon, you know? It's like a... You put a bit too much yellow pickle in there. Yeah, well, I've eaten it now, so who gives a fuck, you know? So I, do, I actually think there's a lot of integrity in this because when they say they don't give a fuck, I actually believe that. I, I really don't think they do. Um, it, that's, that allows them a lot of things. It, it gives them, <laughs> it gives them uh, the freedom to be self-deprecating. They can join in with the, with the hate, the self-hatred. They they're not investing anything creatively in what they're doing, so they've got, you know, emotional credit to use elsewhere in their lives. I mean, I expect at least one of them's a really good golfer. Um, I would imagine Fred Durst has got some side hustle that's become a significant hustle um, in the years since then. And when they do stuff, they're probably just having a great laugh, and it doesn't really matter, does it? None of it matters. This is basically the definition of party music it's completely disposable but kind of fun to listen to meaningless but n yeah meaningless nonsense i suppose um in a good and also in a s sort of if you're actually taking the time to listen to something properly and then you're hearing this it's kind of like oh well, wh why did i do that um but when it comes on it doesn't offend you it's a really good production everything sounds powerful um and in a way, it's sort of got some excitement. There's something about it I like. I know it's not the song, and I know it's not the music, um, but there's something about how enduring they've been and the fact that they're still doing it. I just, I really respect that, actually. But um, I don't think it's a very challenging lyric. The music is repetitive. <laughs> I don't really know why anybody would bother to make a record that sounds like that, but it was a huge hit, so I would assume that that's the reason why it's probably fun to play that riff. They're just grooving on something and saying some words that don't really mean anything. But that's what the kids like, isn't it? It's pop music. Justin Hawkins rides again Again I think one of the things that um, pisses people off is when you take the piss out of yourself. It's like, well, then you've stolen their opportunity to do that. So instead of making fun of you, they end up hating you. Um, but I think Limp Bizkit welcome the hate. I think they're probably one of those bands that understand that middle ground is of no use to anybody. You need to be dividing people and polarising opinion. They do that brilliantly. So good luck to them.
Um, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications and watch one of these two videos. Um, Limp Biscuit. Nice one, guys. <laughs>